A while back, I had somebody ask me a question about some particular sin, about where did Jesus talk about it? <coughs> and for those of you who have read it, I, I wrote a blurb all about that, coming back essentially to this passage. That, yes, there are several things that Jesus never directly addresses. Things that may not have been an issue to him that he thought of, but it was addressed in the Old Testament. It was a problem in the Old Testament. And so, some people say, if Jesus didn't say it, then doesn't it mean he says it's okay? No. Because Jesus says, I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. And until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. That means you can't take out a no, you can't change something around, it's all there for a purpose. It's, you, you got your basic purposes here, you got three purposes of the law, three, three purposes of the law. The first one of course is to tell you how to live, to help you to know how to live. That was obvious. This you do and you do not. You do and you do not. The second use of the law is to guide you when you have decisions, when you have particular things you have to think about. If you look back, you have instances that come up in some of the law in there that is given. The third use of the law is to compel us for our need for God. To compel us that we cannot do things on our own and that we need help. And so, we come to this point, we come to this point where Jesus says, I have not come to abolish the law and the prophets. And many people have come up to him and have said, but you just broke the Sabbath. But your men took out food. But again, you broke the Sabbath. That was one they like to, to keep on getting him at. And there's, there's something, something that he talks about here that he goes into quite over quite a while, over this, this whole passage, is he, he talks about what the spirit of the law is. What the intent of the law was. Not to go beyond, but to get to the intent. What is the heart of what God wanted from us? The food laws were about keeping us healthy. The dangers of, of eating undercooked poultry and pork, we are, we're well aware of nowadays. But other people may have just said, but it's better rare. But it's better rare. But beef is a lot safer rare than pork. So, we look at this and we see, see that, that people have, do have their problems, that they do not want to accept all the law has to say. They doesn't want to accept what the whole Testament says. That's the very reason that some people will say, but Jesus didn't think. But then people take it a step further. There's a group of people who have tried to identify which particular words are probably most accurately what Jesus said. And I think they've gotten down to two words. They've said, we are pretty sure he said those two words. I don't remember what they are, but there are two words that they're pretty sure that he said. It's not a lot of direction in just two words. Not a lot involved in that. But you got some people hope that there that there will be no rules. That they can do whatever they want. We can refer we refer to that today as individualism or relativism. The idea that it's been taken a step further from from just I don't want to do it to well it's not true for me. That may be true for you, but it's not true for me. Relativism, how it relates to yourself. And so, if it's not true for me, then I don't have to obey that. I don't have to live that way. But when you start going down that road, does that create freedom? Does that eliminate it? It doesn't take too long until you get to anarchy. Then you got some people who, even if they don't go down that road, they want no rules, they just don't want to be told no. They don't want to be 
told that it's not okay for me to, to steal or to lie or, you know, to leave mold on my walls. You know, because, yeah, I should be able to do whatever I feel like. And, but the thing is, is that some people desperately need to be told no. Some people desperately need direction. I, we were just watched the first episode of Vampire Diaries last week. And while we were watching that, something interesting came up in that which reflects where the culture is. Because honestly, that show reflects where culture is today. Everything that I say is so terribly wrong in that show is a reflection of where culture is. And th they would say, the writers would say, that's all we're doing. But the thing is, is when you put it on TV and you put it in that context, people start to also say, it's right. But one of the things I noticed in there, in that show, was that there was at one point where this, this vampire who was supposed to be the nephew of the guy who was actually a great, 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 great uncle, but anyway, he, he asked him for direction. The uncle was telling him that he needed to rein in his problems and he needed to work on it, and he asked for help. But he said, I, I, I don't have anything to tell we're in a culture that, that says that we have to figure it out ourselves. That we have to be thrown into the water and figure out how to swim. Just to drown. To be caught in the problem. And for a vampire to be caught in this problem is to be pretty dangerous. The good news for us is that we who are drowning in that water do have help. That we do have a life preserver that can be tossed out to us. A guide, a way to help us. For a generation that desperately needs direction, there's direction to be given. Desperately needed attention, desperately needed direction and guidance. Jesus is saying that I have not come to abolish, I have not come to change the least stroke of a pen. The, the words that it's actually referring to are jot and tittle. And the thing is, is that in Hebrew, <coughs> there are no vowels. So the only way to be able to know what a word is, for some people, is they put little jots to indicate which vowel it's supposed to be. Because otherwise, try, try reading English without the vowels, so you're going to have some problems. But there are many words to be able to figure out, but there'd be a few that you wouldn't be able to figure out. Just think of G-O-D and G-O-O-D. All you have is G-D. Which word are you talking about? That will not be taken away. Not that niche little bit. We've all heard not one iota. That's the letter I in Greek. The smallest letter. Not the least bit. Because, honestly, if you took away the vowels, you lose a whole lot of meaning. A whole lot of meaning. But, it's not just he wasn't going to abolish the law of the prophets, but it's not diminished. Yes, some people, some of these same people who are lost and struggling in their lives, <coughs> who if they can't get rid of something, then they want to change it. 